Welcome to Rico Symposium. Okay, so the most popular thing that I heard from this community that they wanted to talk about this year was, uh, was cold brew. And somebody recently, a few minutes ago, just told me they had a feeling that this is the year that this community was going to take uh, cold brew seriously. And you did. And here's the reason why. Here's, here's a Google Trends search for the words cold brew. And this is a crazy and really compelling graph. You can see it. Cold brew, which has existed at least since the uh, 1960s, had, was maintaining this sort of slow, steady thing. You can see this little, these little heartbeat peaks. That's every summer. The peak of each of these is in July. So in July, people are thinking about cold brew coffee. And then look at what happened in 2010 or so. We started to see a dramatic increase. And this past summer, interest in cold brew, according to Google, was more than twice what it was the summer before. So this is a pictorial representation that people are increasingly interested in this, this kind of coffee. And if you chart it against iced coffee, you can see an interesting thing. There's still more search terms for iced coffee than there is for cold brew. But you can see, and especially last year, you can see that cold brew, the blue spike underneath the, the red spike of iced coffee, you can see that cold brew actually pushed up interest in iced coffee overall. So what that says to me is that cold brew, the existence of this kind of coffee, is actually increasing interest in iced coffee and therefore in coffee overall. And I went to my local Whole Foods to see if this trend was right, and this is what I was confronted with. Um, there are over 50 SKUs of cold brew coffee in this picture. I showed uh, Diane Ellsworth, this, uh, our next speaker, this picture. And she's from Stemtown. And she said, yeah, people ask who our competitors are. And she says, how long do you have? And, but it's not just this ready to drink thing. There was also in the same store this. This was prepared on site and uh, in growlers ready to take home. So the energy of cold brew has built and is at a fever pitch. Also in doing research, I discovered that uh, a, a week from today is a very special day. It is National Cold Brew Day. <laughs> and um, this exists, and I didn't know, but it's now on my calendar, as you can see. Um, so the interest in cold brew has at least um, garnered it a day of the year, as well as its own fictional cold brew cartoon character on Twitter. Do you guys follow cold brew 420? <laughs> cold brew 420, if you don't follow cold brew 420, you must today. It is a parody account dedicated to cold brew and nobody knows who cold brew 420 is, but um, that's who he is. And so once you have a fictional parody Twitter account, you know you've reached something. So we know that cold brew is a craze. But the question is, are we witnessing the birth of a category? And so that's what we're here to explore today. So that brings me to our first speaker. Her name is Diane Aylesworth, as I mentioned before. And she's got a long background in food and beverage. And today, she's got a really cool title. She is the um, Vice President of Cold Brew at Stumptown Coffee. So please help me welcome Diane Aylesworth. <laughs> 